Hello everyone, today we will discuss about development of tongue. Tongue is divided into two parts, oral part or the anterior two-third of the tongue. This one is the anterior two-third of the tongue or the oral part and posterior one-third of the tongue is called as pharyngeal part of the tongue. And these two parts are separated by a V-shaped sulcus that is called as sulcus terminalis. At the apex of the sulcus there is a foramen that is called as foramen cecum. Now coming to the development, this anterior to third part of the tongue is developing from the two lingual swelling and one midline swelling that is the tubercular impar. And these two, uh, these swellings develops in relation to the first pharyngeal arch. And uh, this first tubercular impar develop in uh, first into the in fourth week of the intrauterine life. And just distal and lateral to the tubercular impart, these two lingual swellings develops. Later on, these two lingual swellings will fuse with each other. They will overgrow then the tubercular impart and they will fuse with each other in the midline and they will form the anterior two-third of the tongue. Then uh, the posterior one-third of the tongue, in relation to the second, third and fourth pharyngeal arch, there is a formation or development of the midline swelling that is called as hypobranchial eminence. This hypobranchial eminence will form the posterior one third of the tongue and the muscles of the tongue they are developing from the occipital myotome. So we can say the tongue is developing from the first, second, third and fourth pharyngeal arch and uh, it uh, start developing at the end of fourth week of intrauterine life. And tubercular impar is present just distal to the foramen cecum. Here we can see the two lingual swelling and uh, tubercular impar. And later on these two lingual swelling will enlarge and they will fuse with each other and it will form the anterior two-third of the tongue. And uh, this tubercular impar later on uh, it will not form any recognizable structure of the tongue. So mainly anterior to two-third of the tongue is formed by the fusion of two lingual swellings and they will fuse in the midline and this midline uh, in the midline it is represented by a median sulcus on the dorsum of on the dorsum of the tongue. And now what about hypobranchial eminence? This hypobranchial eminence is divided into two parts larger cranial part which will which will form the posterior one third of the tongue and this larger part it is developing in relation to the second and third arch and posterior caudal part it uh, develops in relation to the fourth pharyngeal arch and it will form the epiglottis and it will also form the posterior most part of the tongue and epiglottis. <coughs> so here we can see the two lingual swellings they are fusing with each other and it is forming the tongue and uh, the site of fusion of the two lingual swelling it is represented by the median sulcus on the tongue and uh, here the, the tubercular impar is not forming any recognizable structure. So the tongue is developing in relation to the first, second, third and fourth pharyngeal arches. Then later on what happens this third arch mesoderm it will overgrow the overgrow and uh, it will overlap the second pharyngeal arch mesoderm. So third arch mesoderm is overgrowing and it is covering the second arch mesoderm. That's why the second pharyngeal arch is buried under the third arch. That's why it is uh, excluded from the development of the tongue. So we will say tongue is developing from the first arch anterior two-third of the tongue is developing from the first arch and posterior one-third is developing from the third arch no contribution of the second arch in development of the tongue <coughs> now the uh, muscles of the tongue these are developing from the occipital myotomes which are developing from the paraxial mesoderm these are the occipital myotomes and from these occipital my myotome myoblast cells are developing and they will move to the developing tongue 
and uh, the nerve supply of the my occipital myotome is hypoglossal now so it will also bring their nerve supply to the towards the tongue that's why we uh, we can uh, explain the course of hypoglossal nerve from posterior to anterior side now the tongue uh, the, the tongue is fused initially it the tongue is fused with the primitive uh, pharynx or the mouth and later on it is separated from the uh, tongue by linguo gingival groove or the sulcus so tongue is separated from the floor of mouth by the deepening of this linguo gingival sulcus now the taste buds valid papillae first appear in relation to the ninth nerve and fungiform and the filiform papillae they will later appear in relation to the cauda tympani which are present in the anterior two third part of the tongue and these circumvallate papillae or the valid papillae they are just anterior to the sulcus terminalis so anterior two third of the tongue uh, they are supplied by cauda tympani because these taste buds are developing in relation to the cauda tympani and posterior one third of the tongue with circumvallate papillae which are present in the just anterior to the sulcus terminalis they are supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve now we can say that uh, the <coughs> the oral part of the tongue or the anterior two third of the tongue it is developing from the two lateral lingual swelling and one midline swelling that is the tubercular impar but this tubercular impar is not form forming any recognizable structure in the lung in the tongue sorry and uh, this uh, do two lingual swelling they will overgrow and they will fuse with each other and it will form the anterior two third of the tongue now <clears throat> now now formation of the hypobranchial eminence that will uh, be formed in relation to the first uh, in relation to the second third and fourth pharyngeal arch and it will form the posterior one third of the tongue and uh, the caudal part of the hypobranchial eminence which is present in relation to the fourth pharyngeal arch it will it will form the epiglottis and posterior most part of the tongue so cranial part of the hypobranchial eminence which is developing in relation to the second and third pharyngeal arch it will form the posterior one third of the tongue and caudal part of the hypobranchial eminence which is developing in relation to the fourth pharyngeal arch it will form the epiglottis and posterior most part of the tongue so we can see the anterior two third part of the tongue and this one is the posterior most part uh, posterior one third of the tongue so anterior two third is of the tongue is developing from the lingual swellings and it is formed in relation to the first arch that's why anterior two third of the tongue is supplied by lingual nerve which is a branch of mandibular nerve because we know that the nerve of the first arch is mandibular nerve so anterior two third of the tongue is supplied by lingual nerve which is a branch of mandibular nerve so sensory supply of the anterior two third of the tongue is lingual nerve and the taste fibers uh, or the taste sensation or the special sensation of the anterior two third of the tongue is by the cauda tympani we know that uh, the anterior nerve of the anterior two third of the uh, sorry nerve of the first arch pre traumatic nerve of the first arch is cauda tympani nerve so the special uh, special sensation of the anterior two third of the tongue are carried by cauda tympani and post traumatic nerve that is the main nerve of the first pharyngeal arch is mandibular nerve and uh, its branch is the lingual nerve that will supply the anterior two third of the tongue now coming to the posterior one third of the tongue that is developing mainly from the third arch because second arch has been buried under it so it will not take part in formation of the posterior uh, one third of the tongue so this posterior one third of the tongue is uh, developing from the second arch and now of the second arch is high uh, glossopharyngeal now so posterior one third of the tongue is supplied by glossopharyngeal now or the ninth now so posterior one third of the uh, tongue is supplied by ninth now that is the glossopharyngeal it uh, sub it is sensory or uh, and also the it is special sensation that is the taste sensation that is also carried by the ninth nerve so 
now supply of the posterior one third of the tongue is glossopharyngeal uh, general sensation and special sensation that is the taste sensation that both are carried by the glossopharyngeal now and one thing that uh, we have to keep in mind that the circumvallate papillae which are present just anterior to uh, sulcus terminalis here the uh, circumvallate papillae are present they are also developing in relation to the glossopharyngeal now so they are also supplied by glossopharyngeal now the so all papilla except circumvallate papillae uh, they are supplied by cauda temperae but circumvallate papillae and pushire one third of the tongue they are supplied by ninth cranial now that is the glossopharyngeal now now coming to the posterior most part of the tongue that is developing fr from the caudal part of the hypobranchial eminence and posterior one third of the tongue was developing from the cranial part of the hypobranchial eminence and posterior po most part of the tongue is developing from the caudal part of the hypobranchial eminence and it is uh, develops in in relation to the fourth arch and now the fourth arch is superior laryngeal now that is the branch of vagus now so now supply of the posterior most part of the tongue with epiglottis is the vagus or the superior laryngeal now and uh, it is supplying the general sensation and the special sensation so all sensation general and the special sensation that is the of taste sensation by the vagus now so if we see the nerve supply of the tongue anterior two third of the tongue general sensation are carried by the lingual now and special sensation by the cauda tympani now okay that is the branch of fifth now lingual now and cauda tympani is branch of facial now posterior one third of the tongue general sensation and the special sensation both are carried by the ninth now and posterior most part of the tongue general and special sensation both are carried by the vagus now that is superior laryngeal or internal laryngeal now so <clears throat> fifth now seventh now ninth now and tenth now they are supplying the uh, tongue now if we come to the muscles of the tongue all the muscles of the tongue they are supplied by uh, except palatoglossus they are supplied by 12th now that is the hypoglossal now because ocna of occipital myotome is hypoglossal now so 12th now that is the hypoglossal now is supplying all the muscles of the tongue except palatoglossus and that palatoglossus now is supplied by palatoglossus muscle is supplied by cranial part of accessory now through pharyngeal plexus so it is by the 11th now so if we see the nerve supply of the tongue it is supplied by 6th now uh, and first 5th now that is the <clears throat> then 7th now for the anterior 2 third 9th now for posterior 1 third posterior most part by the 10th uh, now and muscles of the tongue by the 12th now and cranial part of the accessory now by a pharyngeal plexus so these 6 nerves are supplying the tongue so now uh, we come to the applied anatomy of the tongue that is a uh, a glossia if the tongue is not developing that is called as a glossia and uh, my uh, macroglossia if the tongue is very large that is called as macroglossia Microglossia, if the tongue is very small, then it is called as microglossia. And tongue may be bifid. Uh, if the cleft is present up to the tip of the tongue, then it is called as bifid tongue. And sometime, uh, sometimes what happens, half, uh, tongue is, half of the tongue is developed, then uh, it, it is due to one lingual swelling uh, doesn't develop properly that uh, lead to hemiglossia. So, what is hemiglossia? If uh, one lingual swelling doesn't develop and only half of the tongue develops, then it is called as hemiglossia. And if these two lingual swelling fail to fuse with each other, then it will, it may lead to bifid tongue. Here you can see the bifid tongue. If the two lingual swelling fail to fuse with each other, then it is called as bifid tongue. And one condition is called as ankyloglossia or the tongue tie. In this condition, when the frenulum of the tongue is present up to the tip of the tongue, then it will 
prevent the movement of the tongue or the protrusion of the tongue and it will lead to difficulty in speech that condition is called as ankyloglossia or the tongue tire so this is uh, all about development of the tongue and uh, if we come to the <coughs> summary uh, about development of the tongue tongue is developing from the four pharyngeal arches 1 2 3 and 4 and uh, this anterior two third of the tongue is developing from the two lingual swelling and one tubercular impar and uh, this posterior uh, most uh, posterior one third of the tongue is developing from the cranial part of the hypobranchial eminence and the caudal part of hypobranchial eminence forms the posterior most part of the tongue so anterior two third is developing from the lingual swellings two lingual swelling they will fuse with each other and it will form the lingual swelling and posterior one third of the tongue that develops in relation to the third arch it will form the cranial part of the hypobranchial eminence it will form the posterior most part of the tongue and one thing that site of fusion of the anterior two third and posterior one third of the tongue it is represented by sulcus terminalis and posterior most part of the tongue is developing from the caudal part of the hypobranchial eminence which is uh, developing in relation to the fourth, fourth arch and now of the fourth arch which is uh, vagus or the superior laryngeal nerve that's why it is supplied by vagus now posterior one third is developing in relation to the third arch that's why it is uh, supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve and this third arch overgrow the second pharyngeal arch that's why the second pharyngeal arch is excluded from development of the tongue and anterior two third uh, of the tongue is developing uh, two lingual swellings and tubercular impar are developed and these are developing in relation to the first pharyngeal arch that's why it is supplied by mandibular now or the branch its branch is the lingual now and uh, pre rheumatic now of this arch is corda tympani so special sensation of the anterior two third is carried by the corda tympani so this that's all about the development of the tongue thank you